Sahel has been and is still a strategic meeting place for two radically different forms of understanding the world. Sedentary farming and nomadic pasturing. Sahel is the exact border where the territory of the nomads ends and the lands of labor begin. A frontier wounded by centuries of conflicts with a vanquished end. Nomadic life is ending. The caravans and the large herds are disappearing with the same rhythm as always, slowly but impassively. Mama Maunde is a Nuodabe Pel of Niger. He's 34 years old. He has three wives and three children. Two of his wives, his brothers and his parents, live in the countryside with the animals. He spends part of the year living a nomadic life with his family and the rest of the year in Niamey, where he runs the Association of Nomadic Shepherds of Niger. The Pell people are the ancient nomadic shepherds who have been scattered throughout Western Africa for centuries, and the Uodabi is their most traditional group. They inhabit the strip of pastures that come before the desert, between Tagwa and Agadez. During the dry season, they move their camps from well to well in search of water and fresh grass for feeding the animals. When the rains come, if they are abundant, moving is reduced and life adopts a certain languid and quiet rhythm. Ali lives in the Mauritanian desert. He is the last member of his family to preserve the nomadic tradition. The rest have emigrated to the city or abroad. His wife Deida and her brothers have stayed with him in the desert. Together they work hard to survive in a hostile environment which is determined to throw them out forever. The two devastating droughts during the 80s decimated the animals to the point that even man could not survive. More than 70% of the Mauritanian population lives off the pastures. In 20 years, the nomads have been reduced to half. Everything that is important to us is here, in the camp. I have also tried city life. I bought a wheat grinder and worked hard, but I had no other choice but to return to the desert. I could not adapt to the car fumes or to the fast pace. Everyone wanted wheat at the same time, and I only had one machine. I don't want any other life but this one. But my children want to study. The money that my wife and I earned from the sale of animals pays for our children's education. Our older children live in Nwokchot, and they only come back on vacation in order not to forget about us. My dream is for it to rain for days and days on end, until the dry land becomes an immense green meadow and our children come back to live with us forever. I dream this every day. Ali and Deida have held out, and the reward is not wealth, but dignity. Dignity carved from strokes of silence and days lost without traces of water. The dignity of knowing how to look death in the eye with determination and to move on unharmed, stronger, and still be proud to inhabit the desert.
I have not gone to school, but I listen carefully to what people say. I have memorized a phrase that a foreigner once read to me. He said that walking is in itself an encouraging movement. One's head becomes just as vigorous as one's legs. He who walks gives free rein to his fantasy, his imagination, and his thoughts. He who walks this way has no possessions. Possessions require a sedentary life. You have to stay where you are. In the desert, since nothing owns us, we own everything. In Sahel, the senses do not always lie. Not all the sparkles of water that appear to confuse our eyes are hallucinations. Water is always a miracle, but in the solitude of the desert, it is something more than just a thread from which life and death hang. In Sahel, water is an obsession, a perversely immobile point housed in the center of a delirium. It's an idea, a waiting lover that offers itself to the traveler like a sunstroke of desire. Sahel means shore, and there was a time when this strip was the bank of an enormous interior sea that occupied the Sahara Desert. Like a memory of that remote time, it has remained a discrete chain of lakes that century by century, year by year, has been giving up space to the attack of the desert. But the two great waterways that keep Sahel alive are the Nile and Niger rivers. The Niger is a tenacious and suicidal river. It rises from the mountains of Conakry and Guinea, and instead of flowing into the sea, like all other rivers do, it heads towards the desert. It seems to choose its own erratic desert, one that defies the laws of gravity and geography. Its waters seem to run for kilometers towards a definite end. But then, near Timbuktu, and without prior notice, the river turns, making a sharp curve to avoid the desert and flow into the sea. The Niger has given in to man's logic, as if its resistance was nothing more than a concession to the whims of cartography. The Nile, on the other hand, is a coherent river, that searches for the sea without contemplation. And Khartoum is its capital, installed in the heart of Sahel, at one of the most important geographic enclaves of Africa. It's the exact point where the Blue Nile and White Nile come together, the meeting point of two paths that for centuries drove geographers and explorers of the Western world mad. Which was the true Nile? What path should be followed to find the authentic source of the river? This corner of Africa was one of the gates to the territory of dreams and adventure. Every year, Hundreds of thousands of sub-Saharan people decide to abandon their country to begin the uncertain journey undertaken by any emigrant. They dream about Europe, the promised land seen in movies and television. 